Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Several months ago, um, I was just going through a couple of the channels that I, that I watch on occasion, and I saw a review on this upper receiver that was that was brought in by Wolf, Wolf Performance Arms. And I, my curiosity was immediately sparked. There's a, back in Taiwan, around the, around the 1976 time period, the Taiwanese military decided they wanted their own rifle. They had, they, they had used M16A1s, I do believe, for quite some time. They wanted their own rifle. So they had what they call it the T-65 program. Now, what the T-65 program was, was a combination of taking the better parts of the M-16 to the better parts of the AK-47. And it was an attempt to combine the best of both worlds. So basically what you came up with was you had a long stroke uh, tappet operating mechanism, uh, which was very similar to you know any SKS or FN FAL or so forth. Um, so it Eliminated the gas problem with the gas being bled into the, into the receiver and, and blowing, falling back into the bolt carrier group into the upper receiver. And the barrel, however, was used was a very, you know, very good quality M16 type barrel for increasement and in accuracy. The parts commonality with the M16 was mostly just the bolt carrier group. Um, those parts are um, interchangeable with the standard M16 for as far as the bolt, bolt carrier, cam pin. The bolt carrier, excuse me, is not interchangeable. But there's some very interesting parallels that we're going to look at uh, comparing this to the modern Colt Advanced Piston Carbine, or LE6940C. I was quite surprised to see some of the interesting things that had to do with it. So the T65 was a full-size full rifle, a full 20-inch barrel. It was a standard combat rifle. And then around the 2003 time period, if I recall, came the T86. The T86 basically was a carbine version of it. Both the T65 and the T6, T86 both had uh, fixed carrying handles, much like that of the M16A1, but you had one rifle and you had a carbine. Then comes the T91, is what you see here. Now, the T91 very, uh, was very different because it went with the 1913 rail. In fact, they also have a, a 1913 rail handguard as well. This is this. Looking at this, you basically would see a T91. Now, what happened with Wolf was they brought in parts kits of everything you see here, minus the upper receiver and the barrel. The barrel is a, is a, is a chrome forged barrel. Uh, it's a one and seven inch twist, handling anything in, in the industry. Uh, the receiver is 7075 T6. You will also notice there is no forward assist. Again, not needed. It was something that was never needed on this rifle nor any other modern, any other version of the rifle. And the Taiwanese uh, had it right from the beginning, and they never went with a forward assist. They don't have the pronounced uh, shell deflector, but the rib behind the ejection port cover here does work as a uh, fire cartridge case deflector. Now, uh, we fired this thing in semi and full auto and everything, and there was no issue with cartridge cases hitting anybody in the face. Uh, these do eject uh, very far from, it, far from it. Now, the success of the rifle, the original uh, T-65 rifles were uh, bought by China and Jordan, uh, and also the Type 86s and the Type 91s. The Type 91s were bought in uh, Taiwan, Bosnia, Indonesia, Jordan, Kuwait, UAE, India. I have to say I've seen these a couple times in Jordan uh, with Jordanian troops. Uh, I had seen the, the fixed carrying handle. They were mostly all the T-86 rifles. Um, I did see a couple of D-65s, but the majority of what I saw were uh, the T-86s that were over there. Uh, talking to the troops over there, they were quite fond of them. Um, according to the Jordanian government, uh, they thought they felt these were a little more reliable than uh, an M-16 was, but uh, you know, it wasn't quite as, uh, you know, as, as reliable as an AK-47. You know, you're still with this. This is not an AK-47. You're still looking at more of the match type, not match grade, but you're looking at more of a of a Western uh, com complexity for machining, more higher tolerances, more precision, which in turn gives you more accuracy. And unfortunately, when it comes to a lot of these systems, when you start gearing more towards the AK-47 type operating mechanism, you start losing a little bit of, of the accuracy. But the ones that you get from Wolf, you have a modern cold hammer forged barrel. So I was really anxious to get this thing out to the range, but I'm going to show you how this thing works a little bit, too, uh, how, this, how it comes apart. And we're going to talk about some uh, similarities that uh, I just couldn't help but to mention. The bolt carrier, as you can see, no forward assist notches. You have your, your typical, uh, I, know, I like to call this a tombstone, where the, where the operating rod impacts. And when you take this apart... Standard M16 type firing pin.
standard cam pin, standard bolt. Now this bolt, as you can see, does not have the uh, slots for the gas rings because it's not needed, but you could drop a standard M16 bolt in here and it would work just fine. You notice the manganese phosphate finish on here. This is going to come into play later when it's something I'm going to show you. And standard charging handle. Now for disassembly, there's a couple things you can do. Now we're going to, we're going to take this fully apart. You can just take the, the operating mechanism out from the front, but I want to take the hand guards off so you can see a little, bit in the, a little bit in the inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a drift punch. I'm going to push on that detent right here. Pull that out to detent. Now we can see that the piston mechanism is all encased in this sheath right here. This is an excellent uh, design because it keeps dust and dirt and crap from getting inside the operating mechanism where it moves back and forth. So uh, this is definitely a really good way to, to go about doing this. Now to remove the gas system, we're going to take, pull out on, on this lever right here, pull, push it and we're going to rotate it one turn. Now we're going to rotate and we're going to pull the whole system right out. So here's your system. So we're going to take our gas valve, our, our expansion chamber, push in, lift right out. So now we have our gas valve right here. You can see the gas port on the bottom. And as you can also see, it comes in at an angle. And I think gas port erosion wouldn't be as much of an issue for this rifle due to the fact that uh, this also is controlling how much gas is coming in. We have the operating rod and the piston. We have a spacer, auxiliary spring, and the alignment. This is your system. Now, what I want to show you, what I found pretty interesting, what we have here is the Colt LE6940P, Colt's external piston system. And there's a couple of things I want you to take a look at. Colt's articulating link system. What have we here? We have a very similar design on the T91 manufactured in 2003 as we do on Colt's external piston, which is around the 2010, 2011 time period. So it's almost like this, this is a very similar and it's existed before. I want to take a look at these bolt carrier groups too. They look nearly identical. Big diff biggest difference meaning you have the four assist notches on the Colt and the Colt has these bottom skis on here where the T91 just has an angle here. So it's just sort of interesting when you look at uh, this older Taiwanese design uh, to the modern Colt design. I'm not in inferring any kind of uh, copying or anything like that, but it was just something that really struck me when I saw, uh, when I took it apart for the first time and saw you know, their version of the articulating link uh, versus the Colt mechanism. It's just, uh, well, it's it was too interesting not to uh, not to say something about the big difference with the Colt also is is this has gas rings on here, so this will this is a this is a more efficient system the Colt uses compared to the Taiwanese. Uh, this is more of, a, of an AK type uh, where you have you have sort of a force fitting in between the two of them, so you do get a lot more gas blowback on this piston than you do on this one because of the sealing of the, uh, the rings. Okay, so for reassembly, if I can get my parts here, we're going to take the sleeve. And we're going to drop that spacer down there. Then we're going to have the intermediate spring, the spacer. We're going to insert. Now we're going to take our valve. Now you have a, a little uh, notch on here, which you can push in over to the side. So your entire mechanism is all self-contained. It's 
So we're going to push inward and we're going to rotate like so, so that's flat. Now we're locked in place. We're going to put the sand guard on the bottom. Just like so. Now we have to align We do have to align this. Slide back in like so. Or you assemble the bolt carrier group. There you go. Now, interestingly enough, when you look at the bolt carrier, you can see the much larger uh, hole on the, on the right-hand side where the firing pin rotating pin goes. This goes back to the really early days of the M16. They were much larger than they, than they are now. So you can tell this was copied off one of the really earlier versions. Also, when you look at the ejection port cover, this would be a early, I would say, probably pre-68, pre pre-70 uh, ejection port cover. doesn't have the reinforcements on here. Now, the biggest difference between the military issue uh, T91 and this one is you don't have the bayonet log on the front. Now, your flash suppressor, there's a couple different versions you're going to see. This is a standard flash suppressor. You're also going to find ones with vent holes on the top here, which works as a compensator. Now, we're going to take this to the range and we're going to test fire, but what we're going to do is we're going to put it on a uh, Lewis machine and tool lower receiver. So, we're going to get a chance to fire it on fully automatic as well as semi. Um, you know, we, our groups, as I said, uh, you know, we, it was, it was very acceptable for a military rifle. But let's go to the range and we're going to see how this thing works on semi and fully automatic. Overall, this thing was a lot of fun. Uh, it worked awesome. You know, I, I really like this because I like the different ways uh, the system is, uh, has evolved. You know, this, uh, I'm probably going to end up keeping this one uh, because I really like the way that it it's different. Um, you know, I, I have uh, external piston guns. I have a couple different types. I like seeing the different ways that this rifle has been uh, modified over the years, especially in different countries. So this uh, this was really, really cool. Now, this will drop on any lower receiver, uh, so you can buy these right from Wolf. You go right in uh, Wolf Performance Arms. Uh, there's several different locations you can get this. I do believe you can get this uh, through most of the uh, normal distribution channels, uh, as well as right from them. Um, if you have any questions on it, please uh, feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.